Well, welcome to the Regimental Museum of the Royal Welsh, which covers the South West Borders, the Welsh Regiment, the Royal Welsh Fusiliers, and as we are today, the Royal Welsh. I'm now going to take you inside the museum, and I'm going to take you to see some of the dioramas, and we'll see what happens in there. It might be a bit of a surprise, it might not be, but we'll have a look and see what happens. Now, if you follow me, we'll go in to the Zulu room. Okay, let's go. Right, we're now in the Zulu room. This is a dedicated room for the Zulu Wars, as the 2nd Battalion and 1st Battalion were in the wars. And this is one of our dioramas. The interesting thing about this diorama, it was made by an ex-curator of the museum, Bill Kanan, who was an engineer, got the rank of W01, knows everything about the Zulu Wars and this is the most accurate diorama of the Zulu Wars and if you look at it you can see the layout of Rochefort, the defensive layout without the redoubt at this point and you've even got the dog in there named Dick and Sergeant Reynolds looked after the dog because his owner didn't want to take him to his Lundawana. But there was another dog called Pip and he was at his Lundawana. And three days after the attack he made his way back in to Rock's Drift. Very interesting. Um, if you want to have a look at the, the diorama, uh, you can see the layout, the tentage, you can see the uh, the cookhouse. Uh, you can see the toilet right down the very bottom. Now this toilet was only used by the officers. And we've got the troops toilet up in the corner over there, thunder boxes. Uh, we find out or we can do a close-up of the battle and we'll show some different points in there <coughs> and then we'll go on and talk about some other aspects of the Zulu War. We've got further two dioramas, uh, one of Rock's Rift, one of Isandwana. Now the interesting thing about Isandwana is when you look at the Zulus attacking, you've got the three different impious or regiments. These ones here are 20s or 30s and they got the black shields they're not married you got the ones over here again black shields with some white in them not married the ones in the center are the married regiments <laughs> now a regiment could be anything from 500 to 1000 because it's all dependent on age group and they get the age group together so that they go through the battle plans, they go through the fights so when a regiment is entitled to get married it might be a thousand brides or five hundred but until then you can't put your shield fully white so they are the, the creme de la creme of the Zulu nation and if you look closely at them these ones have got a band on their head. The band is a sign of a wedding ring in our language. So these ones here are married and these two are not married. And this is what would have happened at the Zantuana. They come in from different angles. As the head of the ball, you've got the horns, you've got the head, and then you've got the loins and the horns come round and as the horns close and the head reinforces 
yawns and that gets depleted the loins move forward to fill up the head so everybody is moving forward and it comes round until they join up and they insert their enemy and then they just all move in tactically it's brilliant not for us though because we lost but that was that was the battle you got the ammunition boxes uh, but if you look at the ammunition boxes they turned around and said not enough screwdrivers uh, they couldn't open them but it was proved that if you kicked, banged, or hit the butt against the box, it would open because there's only one screw holding it. So I think this was just a myth that got put in to make entertainment, in my opinion. I don't know who made this one, but if we move on to the Rogue Swift, you can see the redout and the redoubt basically is a reinforcement where the troops can congregate around a small area to give maximum amount of fire at the enemy that is overcoming them. And you've got the redoubt and what would happen is the troops on a call from the bugle would come back and they'd have a, a kneeling rank you'd have a standing rank and you'd also have the equivalent of a rank on the top and at the given order the ones on the top would show themselves and then you get and by the time that the third rank had fired the front rank had reloaded so it's front rank fire middle rank fire rear rank fire, front rank fire, middle rank fire, and it goes on. So it's a rolling charge of seven points wrong, a 0.45 round coming at you. If the rounds come down range, and if they hit a Zulu in a soft part, it could take out two or three. If it hit you on a bone, I should imagine it would take your arm or your leg off. So, the interesting thing is a redoubt is just a congregational area to maximise the amount of fire with a maximum amount of ray, uh, rounds coming at a rapid pace. And you just imagine someone coming into a wall of rounds and as long as they got ammunition there, they could fire all day. You've got the, the mealy bags. Now the thing that always gets in my mind, and this is me thinking, not the museum, is the Zulus were tactically superior to us. They were fighting stronger, bigger than us. And the thing that comes to my head is, why didn't they just cut the mealy bags so they could the inside could just run out and the wall would have collapsed instead of climbing over them. But everybody can't be good on the day. And I think that is why we were victorious. Now an interesting point is at the Battle of Isundwana, the troops thought it was a bad omen. Because if you look at the shape of the rock formation, it looks like the sitting lion, which is the English, and it also looks like the Sphinx, which was a battle honour for the Battle of Alexandria in 1801. So the troops thought it was a bad omen that they were lying in the shadow of one of the battle honours. As you're looking at it, young husband was an officer, took his section up there, and one of them got into the cave and he had about 20, 30 rounds with him. And he fired Elder Zulus off, but once his rounds ran out, the Zulus got into the cave, they pulled him out, and they done their duty by killing him, wearing night in my clothing, 
and releasing the spirit from the body. And that's up in the cave. Another interesting point about this Luana is if you come with me, and I'll show you. Is the bass drum. Now if you look up at the bass drum, this was the only drum that survived the battle at the Zulduana. Mainly because the Zulus, once they kill someone, they also broke up anything that could be used in the afterlife. Drums were made of wood. This was presented to the regiment and it was made of metal. So the law was changed, or what I say the law, the rules were changed, that all drums were made of metal from this point on. Because on the drums, they had the cipher of the king or the queen. So that's another good reason. So this is one of the first drums and the last drum of the regiment. You've also got the Union flag. Now, the Union flag flew above Rockstrift right away through the battle. The provenance, we've checked all the way through and we can prove it was the Union flag that flew at Rockstrift. Uh, it's 140 year old, at least, that we know of. Uh, where the patches are, it's where it was folded up and it was put into a soldier's knapsack. Now, why would a soldier have the flag? It's usually the officer. But apparently this soldier, um, when you look at his records, had been on a, had up on more than one occasion for theft. So, I'm not saying no more because it's not theft, it's liberation, because it's in the museum. And that there is a minimum of 140 year old. A, a little idiosyncrasy, everybody calls it a Union Jack, but it's only a Union Jack when it's hanging off a jack arm on a naval ship. On land, it's a Union flag. But you call it what you want, that is why we're free. Now, I just explained about Islandwana and the last known survivor. Well, this is a diorama of the scene inside the cave. And you can see the soldier inside and you can see the Zulus advancing and attacking him. We don't know the name of the, Zulu, uh, the soldier. Matter of fact, we don't know the name of the Zulu either. So I was right on both accounts, but he was the last one to die, and he was the last one yesterday. But that's another thing. In Zulu dawn, a Bluefield turned around and said, "Go away! You're not having the ammunition. This is not your ammunition point." He said that for a reason that's not been brought out on the film. The reason being, a Martini Henry 577-450 top loader was a full charge rifle. A carbine that was used by the cavalry, the artillery and the rocket sections had a half charge. We could use their rounds, they couldn't use ours. And that's the reason that he turned around and said, go away. It wasn't that he was mean. Today, you would be classed as racial. It's because they could not use the ammunition. And that's why he was sent. Is if you look at these rounds here, you've got white shoulders on them. And a white shoulder means full charge. And they were used for a Martini Henry 577-450 top loader. We've also got a box of ammunition back behind me and if you come to the museum you can have a look at it. 100 rounds of ammunition weighed approximately 18 pounds. So you get a couple of bags of sugar make it 18 pounds and then try running with that in temperatures up in the high 30s possibly 40s and you're running back into a combat area 
that's got nothing but Zulus in front of you. Take some guts. You wouldn't have me doing it, I tell you. I've been a guard room. Right, well I hope you've enjoyed this little view of the museum and a little trip and I hope that you've enjoyed what we do. But if you want to see more, if you come to the museum, on my left is a medal room. It's got three and a half thousand medals in there. On my right, it's got the armory. And in the armory, we've got a television and it shows Tribute to Bravery, which is the complete Zulu war from start to finish in 20 minutes. It's cut a little bit. And uh, we're more than happy to put on for you. You turn up and we'll accommodate. A little tip for you, and I think I talked to you last time, 21st of July, Sunday, the King of the Zulus is visiting Brecon and the museum. There's also bands and reenactments. And the word of the day is free. So please come, enjoy yourself, fetch your children, and there'll be, like I say, reenactors. Fetch the mother in law and see if we can see if we can get her knocked off with someone else. Okay? And don't forget, fetch me sweets. I need them. Thank you. Bye.